Hey everyone, I'm coming to you with another Brewmaster key. This is a plus 12 tyrannical theater of pain. And we timed it with only three deaths. The key to timing a tyrannical theater of pain to me is making sure you have a route that allows you to spawn prideful on the uh, Kultarok boss and on the Modratha, the final boss. So you would see that I purposefully, you know, make some tweaks and changes um, over here. And this is really important to me because I feel like without the prideful buff, without the 30% damage buff, it's going to be rough. So we are actually skipping this blood horn now and he actually sees stealth, so we can't shroud through it. The idea behind this pull is I just want to die and let my party stay out of combat. As you guys can see, they're running over uh, to the other side and now they're on the, across the opposite side of the platform while I suicide to this blood horn. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is because we want to tag this blood horn before we fight the final boss for the additional percentage to proc um, prideful. And that way we have prideful on Modrata. Now you can technically pride, uh, proc prideful from some of the mobs downstairs, but you lose a lot of time because of the, the RP that is required to spawn Modrata. So that's the rationale why we skip that. We def skip that. I, I'm, not, I'm not a night elf, so I can't shadow meld it off. So I had to suicide there. Which is fine. Um, my party has been doing... Um, you guys can see we are working on pace ran first. And I think that's the new strategy that we have decided to adopt going forward. Um, pace run is a lot easier than Satel first because Satel puts a shield at 40% up that cannot be dispelled. It, it can be dispelled on the beta servers. On the live servers, they somehow remove that functionality to dispel Satel's shield at 40%. You guys can see the kick pass here. Everyone's taking turns to kick and we're calling them on voice comms. Right, so pace rent is about to go down, which is great. There you go. Um, there's a lot of damage incoming on this fight and in parks it might feel like, oh, it's, it's unsustainable, it's unhealable. And you guys can see like a really cool play that my druid did. Uh, Zira basically went over and stunned uh, one of my players and my druid basically went over and bashed um, the boss in bad form. It's a really, really good play. So you gotta watch out for, you know, that, that annoying CC mob that was spawned as the fourth boss um, intermittently. You can actually pre-place a hunter's trap on yourself as well. Um, there's another way to CC that annoying mob. Oh, we're working on Dacia next. Uh, the reason why we're working on Dacia is because you guys can see we cleave Satel down to 40%. Proc Satel's shield, immunity shield. And everyone swaps to Dacia, that way we do not lose any um, downtime on the boss so we can't hit anything. So in TOP, Theater of Pain, there is I think a couple of ways you can configure the route. Um, I think there's two ways actually. The first is you can decide which wing to start with. And that also affects how you proc reaping, uh, not reaping, but prideful. <laughs> Reaping is season 2 BFA. Um, the other thing you can do is when you hit into Kuta Rock's wing, you can choose to go left or right on the two teleporters that will give you different counts. So you can configure the route um, up to your specifications. Um, and obviously, you know, the, the um, dungeon tools here is the most useful. The Mythic Dungeon Tools add on here is super useful for configuring your routes. Um, over here, we are heading into the uh, Gorchop area first. Um, and the reason is because I have planned it such that if we do Gorchop first, I can just proc um, Reaping, not Reaping, but Prideful on Kultarok as the second wing. The most daily of mobs here is basically the Sludge Spewer that was Mark Circle. You want to alternate between three melee kicks because it does something called Withering Discharge. If it goes to your party, everyone gets a debuff. Really painful stuff. Something I like about Brewmasters, um, and after playing it for you no know, a couple of weeks now, I think its threat is actually really good. Like 
going into pulls and just pack smashing with my legendary allows me to hold down threat really quickly for you know DPS hungry people <laughs> in my group. And it actually does really well in AoE pulls. As you can see me kicking that. Or rather my rogue kicked that. It's really good to have a rogue in the party. Um, you can basically solo interrupt everything. So basically how we would usually assign our rogue is you would just sit on star and you'll get every single cast. Um, you can cycle blind, um, you know, gouge, and all these wonderful like, you know, rogue CCs and his own kick. So working on the butcher here. Um, this chop, I believe it goes on a random non-tank target. Something I've been trying to figure out is whether the chop from the mob can be outranged. And if you guys know in the comments, please let me know because I'm learning as well. Um, over here, we're skipping this rancid gas back. You guys can see we shrouded. Um, and we, my rogue distracted the mob, which is really handy. We want to skip this mob just so we can spawn a prideful very specifically at Kutarok. So as you guys can see, like we're doing everything to make sure that we spawn Prideful at Kutarok because it's a very hard, uh, you know, boss fight to heal. My DK popping a bomb limb there, which gives us kind of like free interrupts, which is pretty awesome. Um, storming is really bad, you know, like this week has been very rough for me because I really, I really am not enjoying the storming effects as a tank. And it's very tight quarters here, so making sure everyone dodge my arrows is important. Um, I'm gonna dispel myself like right now, I think. Yep, I'm gonna dispel myself as you guys can see. I probably need a uh, a macro that does self dispels. It's a lot easier rather than using mouse overs. So that's something I need to fix. You guys can tell I'm always tweaking my own UI, my keybinds. Alright, prayer has gone down and I'm just waiting to pull the big guy. I'm not pulling the small guys on the bridge because I think they're bolster. They have to do it patiently even though we have the prideful buff. Something I've learned to do on this ad here is I try and stack the puddles to the right. But that leaves like the left for people to dodge. You know, as a tank, it gives me great satisfaction to stack puddles like that. I don't know why. <laughs> it has something to do with my OCD nature, I think. Over here, you kick star. It's really important. You guys see I drop a ring on pull. This is to prevent them from jumping around. And again, positioning your mobs is really important to maximizing DPS in the group. Something important. And you know, as I dash across, I uh, got caught in a storming there. Not fun. Ask any melees this week, they'll tell you it's not a fun week. Alright, I believe this is the mob that does chop as well. So he'll turn around and basically chop someone random, like on my rogue now. Which again, I'm very curious how to do this with high keys. Like, on high fortified keys, wouldn't it one shot people? And if so, what's the counterplay? So working on Gorchop here, popping my weapons of order. You guys can see our Bloodlust is still down from the first boss, which is okay. Because we wanted to Bloodlust first boss, um, Kutarok, and Modretta. Dodging the chains here. I think I got hooked on one of the chains here actually. It's a bad place. If you guys see the amount of healing done, I'm actually keeping up with my Wrestle Druid. Um, a lot of that is like from the purifying of uh, Hateful Strikes and also Celestial Brew before Hateful Strikes which chunks. Um, so you guys can see like, you know, if I have Celestial Brew up going to Hateful Strikes, like I mitigate so much damage. You guys can see me popping it here, I think. Oh, I was one second late. Unfortunate. I was caught in a GCD there. 
Hopefully Celestial Brew is off the GCD. That'd be great. So I always save a Purifying Brew charge before Celestial Brew. I got hooked into the boss there, which is unfortunate. I think I got hooked here. Yeah, I got I got clipped, which is something that annoys me. Uh, just bad positioning from me. Uh, my Druid is able to catch up really quickly here. I proc my Cheat Death um, over there from the um, Sun King Salvation Trinket. Very handy. Dodging the hooks again. The hooks are really annoying. Uh, not only that, but they're storming as well, so <laughs> it's just rough. But of course, it's 100% doable. It's just, you know, annoying to deal with. Right, Hateful Strikes. I should have Celestia Brew going to Hateful Strikes there. That was kind of my bad. It's a lot of health on this guy. It's definitely not a week to push keys, that's for sure. Um, farming 10s to 12s, I think it's fine. But if you're trying to push like 15s and whatnot, this is not the week to do it. <laughs> it's just... It's just too rough. That's bolstering. Firstly, that stops you from pulling really big on trash. Despite it not being not being a fortified week. And they're storming that unless you're bringing all three range, it's gonna be a problem. And tyrannical in general is just, you know, a good not a good week to push keys. It's a lot tougher. And you guys can see why when we do Kuta Rock. So finally now I'm heading into um, Kutarok's wing because our prideful buff is back up online. Alright, I drop a transcendence at the entrance. It's a brewmaster I like to break uh, this pool into two pools. Transcendence out for heals. I let all the mobs group up before I stun them with leg sweep. And I can ring the next cast if needed. Dodging tornadoes. I hit there. <laughs> Feels so bad doing tornadoes in such a tight corner. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Now we do the remaining bit. My rogue is shrouding, because um that allows them to get to the exit without pulling first. They body pulled some I feel. Which is fine. Everyone just get to the exit. Hunter drops tar trap. Good place. I do not have leg sweep here, so we are just stunning them and kicking manually. Rifle spawns. Drop an AMZ here just to mitigate damage. Prideful is no big deal um, on tyrannical keys. Alright, so another portal guardian, and it's easy on tyrannical weak, so nothing to, to worry about. He will drop an orb, and you guys will see me go right this teleporter. And so Storm honestly doesn't do much. Uh, I'm making a habit to stand in the Afloorescence by the Druid, just for passive use. Dropping it to the right, taking Teleporter. Um, how we're doing the mobs is really simple. Um, I'm kicking the right Bone Spear and I'm assigning the left Bone Spear to other people. The Bone Spear is the one that trucks. The Grey Spike doesn't do much. But this Bone Spear channel that he does, really painful, so you want to kick that. The next pool might seem dangerous, um, but on a, on a fortified week is dangerous, but tyrannical week is no big deal. Same approach here. The rogue is gonna lock down the Magus full time. Oh no, actually he's locking down Moon full time if I'm not wrong. Yeah, he's on Moon. Um, me and the DK is just kicking Star. So as long as we don't let any of the cast off, um, it's fine to pull all three, and then we're just you know tunneling into the Portal Guardian there. 
Oh, look, Guardian got boasted, which is not great. So the next Soul Storm will hurt. And we're just calling for personals at this point, I think. Yep, I think we're calling for personals at this point. I touch of death there to get rid of it. I'm gonna go left here. Um, going right will give you additional count, like just slightly more count, which is not what I want because we are on track to proc reaping at 60% before cool tarot. So as you guys can see, like this entire strategy or route has been designed to kind of work for tyrannical week. Dodging the winds. This two mobs, like the most important thing is just dodging winds. Because the cast they do, like honestly, it doesn't hurt that much. Like, you probably should kick them on cooldown, but the most important thing is your party dodges the death winds. Alright. Guess what I think is the most difficult pool in the entire dungeon? It is a tree pack that was spawn prideful. Like the moment a single mob dies, it spawns prideful. It's very rough and what I'm calling for the party to do right now is basically we have a rogue sitting on the Magus again, I believe, while me and the DK sits on Star. Um, and the idea is that we simply cleave them down evenly if possible and we just simply control the mobs. Uh, unfortunately, my DK got knocked off by the death wind, so he died. He needs to run back now. Um, I had to ring there because he ran out of kicks because my DK was blown off. But it's very hectic here because you gotta kick and stun the bow spears and the volleys and dodge death winds and dodge storming and kill them evenly. So it's very it's very rough this pull. Um I think we managed to endure here. So the most important thing here is that you you know you dodge arrow well you should dodge arrows on Prideful, not to add. Um it's very 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 like hectic. Most important thing here is to kind of single target the prideful here before the prideful kills us. Um, but over here, you know, I'm making a call to just kill the Dark Speaker in case we wipe. And now that there's only one mob, it makes it a lot easier. Yes, it's 20 stacks. But as long as the healer has cooldowns, he has three of life right now, everything will be okay. And so it's been a lot harder, of course, with my DK not being on this platform. But still manageable. Calling for personals here to be used, I think. Because the mob is already at 20% stack, so he's doing the maximum amount of damage he can to us. And I'm just self-healing where I can. Got rid of it. Great. And my DK has the buff, uh, the buff from Prideful as well. Because he was near the platform when we killed it. Click the op, activating the shortcut. Not that we need it. <laughs> If we wipe here, we probably can't time the key, I reckon. Right, so we're pulling cool Tarot. The most dangerous bit of this entire fight. Well, entire dungeon, except the last boss. Um, Why is it dangerous? Well, there's a lot of healing that goes out in this, in this entire fight. And storming makes it very messy for melee. Now, the good news is I play a tank that can off heal. And when he channels Draw Soul, he's not meleeing me. So it allows me to channel. Because I have nothing to dodge or parry. So you guys can see me he helping out the healing in a bit. Alright, Prideful has worn off. Our last uh, has kind of worn off too. So it's going to be an uphill grind from here. You guys can see the party is taking um, a bit more damage. The healer is also starting to fall a little behind, so I'm swapping over to off heals now. So you guys can see, whenever he's doing draw souls, I'm looking at the party and saying who needs heals, and I'll vivify when needed. At this point in time as a tank, I just want to mitigate as much damage as possible, just to give my healer a bit more breathing room. Right, you can see draw souls coming out here. And it's on two people, so I'm instantly swapping to Vivify now. Vivifying my DK, Vivifying my Hunter, keeping my DK alive. Um, that's really important. 
And Kutarok's about to go down now. And you guys can see like from the party trackers, my healer have exhausted all his cooldowns. So if he went on any longer, this would have been a very messy pull in general. I'm heading over to Zef the Unfallen here. Working on the front mobs. They don't really do much on a tyrannical week, so it's pretty manageable here. Right, so there's more whirlwinds here. Just dodging storming. I think they kind of nerf storming if I'm not wrong. They nerf its damage. But I think what needs to be fixed about the affix, I think, it's... Maybe the spawn rate, um, or either that, you know, on bosses where... Okay, let me paint you a picture. So we're doing plague fall, and on the last boss, you were supposed to dodge tentacles and soak the circles from the adds um, as a tank. And in the overlap where you need to soak the circles and stand in a specific spot for tentacles, storming spawns. What are you supposed to do then? Because if you stand in the circle, you get knocked back by storming and you get knocked out of the circle. If you don't stand in the circle, you end up wiping the party because you know you need to soak the circle. So what, what do you do? Um, so the scenarios like that, that makes me phantom. Like it's very hard to phantom how very high keys can be done on storming weeks. So I'm not sure like what they can do to kind of tune it. But my opinion is Maybe on bosses, you need to fine-tune the spawn rate of storming. But, you know, maybe I'm just overthinking it. And we just need to make sure we dodge the ground smash here. That thing kind of one-shots if I remember correctly. This mob doesn't do much. We're gonna get prideful here at the 80% prideful of this mob. And another ground smash that I'm moving out of. Alright, so we're working on our prideful here. Making sure I sidestep the prideful. We've gotten everyone in the party to download like the Wigora that kind of yells when they have prideful on them. Um I think the hunter was a was a pug. So he well he's a friend of a friend, so he doesn't have the macro we had. I think the rope moved on the last second onto me. <laughs> so that's unfortunate. Alright, the next pull here. We want to zerk down the champion. Um, the champion gives the nearby allies a damage buff. And it has the highest health if I'm not wrong. So we're zerging it down because you definitely do not want to bolster the captain. Um and here, after these guys are bolstered, we work on the Arbalesk. The Arbalesk are dangerous because they have a random, you know, threat table. They just shoot whoever they want. So they're the next most dangerous mob. On a fortified week, not, what we normally do is we will CC the champion, we we'll trap it, and we'll basically pull all the other mobs into the next room, or rather the earlier room, and we will just blow, uh, blow up the Arbalest before they can do anything to us. It's really critical. I'm working on this guy now. Doesn't do much. It's hard, melee's hard, but doesn't one shot. And you guys can see from the count, um, after this mini boss, we would have roughly 98%, right? Which means that I can then get my 100% prideful before Modretta, the final boss, using that. Um, blood horn that we skipped that I suicided to at the start of the key. So that's how we plan the routes. Um, Cause Zaf the Unfaller is not hard. It's a boss that just takes really long to kill. Kinda like Gorchok. Alright, so we're doing Zaf the Unfallen. It's a very easy boss, but 
At the end of the day, for Tyrannical, you just need to make sure you kill Banners fast. If you kill Banners, you can then dodge all its abilities and everything is fine. Alright, here we go. I make sure I have Celestial Brew up for Brutal combo, it kinda hurts. You guys can see it eating eating my entire Celestial Brew there. Top of the HPS meters because of how much Celestial Brew mitigated. Over here we need to kill this banner fast. I think my DK got hit. So my DK died with the resin. Um, a little unfortunate. Now this circle, Daphne Crash, it seems it is actually larger than the ground effect seems. If you're standing on the edge of it, you still die to it sometimes. Just be very wary of that. Again, I pop Celestial Brew for the Brutal combo. And over here, we're working on this um, Oppressive Banner, which you guys can see I pop Weapons of Order because two of my DPS is in the arena. It's up to me and the healer and the rope to kind of burst it down. Uh, lots of damage here. I pop Fortifying Brew halfway through. Wasn't sure if I'll lift, so that's what I did. Making sure we dodge Crushing Slam, Massive Cleave. All these are easy to dodge as long as the banner is down. If the banner is up, you end up having a movement speed debuff, which could potentially cause you to wipe. Again, swapping to the banner fast, everyone's on the banner. I pop Celestial Brew before Brutal Combo, um, which is really important. This is a empowered Celestial Brew, so I could soak all the damages. Making sure we get out is really critical. There you go. Alright, I'm working on the boss again. I have a touch of death here that I will use on this banner. I probably am using Celestial Brew. Yep, I use Celestial Brew before Brutal Combo. To mitigate a lot of the hits. I called for a Buck Skin. Iron Buck for my healer. Touch of death on the banner here. Just so we can do this overlap in a clean fashion. You're only 40% through this boss, is take, it takes a long while to kill him. It's a lot of health. But we're good on time, you guys get a timer like we are maybe 9 minutes away. Lots of time. So you just need to do it slow and steady. Again, working on the banner, popping Celestial Brew before Brutal combo is really important. I couldn't move from the tornado because of the debuff. Uh, but the banner's gone, so that's great. You guys can see me trying to off heal um, a little over here. Sometimes just trying to help out my healer here. Sending vivifies across the party. Right, I have another weapons to order that I popped here just to work on the banner. It's a really, really long fight. Again. Working down the banner, as long as the banner is dead, we have an easier time dodging abilities. The banner's dead. Just need to dodge now. It's always good to play closer to the middle of the room, and then just run out for this deafening crash. Alright, Zeph the Fallen is going down, so we're just tunneling the boss now. And something nifty that you see us doing after this boss, is we saved a banner you guys can see the banner here, this banner here, that my um, my DK is activating gives us the versatility buff. So that is something that is very well received going into the final boss. Getting food buffs here before I use the teleporter. Now the reason why we're doing that is because um, if we simply hit the teleporter, we'll instantly engage the uh, mob. I'm reapplying my uh, Shadow Core Oil here. Alright, so everyone's ready, so we're taking Teleporter up, so we'll instantly aggro the Blood Horn that we skip. You guys can see the Blood Horn that we skipped here, so we're gonna pull it. And this is gonna give us Prideful. And you guys can see our Blood Loss is back up, which is great. Bloodhound is an easy mob, um, as long as you have a Soothe on the Tantrum. I think he can even be pulled into the first boss in the future. Alright, we're prideful here, so this gives us the 30% damage buff we need to pair with Bloodlust. 
And we really, I think, only have one shot at the boss, because without Prideful and without Lust, this boss is pretty difficult. It requires everyone to play like a god, basically. Well, even as it is, it requires everyone to play like a god. And I'll kind of explain why, because um, there's some very nasty overlaps on this boss, where she spawns ads, and you need to dodge ghostly charge, and you need to dodge the frontal from the boss. That tree overlap is normally where a lot of people struggle. Uh, we are Bloodlust, so we are pulling right away without wasting single time. Uh, I pop Celestial Brew before the Reaping Scythe, really important. Reaping Scythe hurts, so I pop Celestial Brew here, Reaping Scythe is going to come down on me. There you go. So Reaping Scythe was eaten up by Celestial Brew there, perfect. Uh, dodge the Frontal, Dark Devastation. The next overlap here that we're going to get is, uh, we potentially might face the boss. So we faced the boss here, so we actually got a easy overlap. Uh, because we don't have the portal and the ad spawning at the same time. We have the Echoes of Carnage first. So the spell queue on this boss is pretty wonky. Uh, but basically because we face it so fast, we skip the... We skip one of the ads phase, which makes it so much easier. You guys can see like my DK is popping off here. On a single target. You know, just DK things. This is why if you guys watch the world, uh, race to world first. Race that's going on right now. DKs are so strong. Like, they're bringing so much melee DKs because they're good on AoE, they're good on, they're good on single target. Getting all those uh, white stuff on the ground. Over here, we're just calling for people to blow up the ads, really important. I ring that to cancel the cast. Kicking that, using a uh, touch of death to get rid of them. I told everyone here on voice comms to dodge the ghostly charge, just ignore everything and dodge ghostly charge. Um, I think my DK got hit there, if I'm not wrong. <laughs> but he survived through IBF or something. Another... Um, you know, portal spawn, and now we're just moving to the corner, tunneling into boss, and boss is dead. Um, so you guys can see, like, you know, this boss was basically done uh, quite easily with Prideful and Lust. If you do not have Prideful and Lust, the problem you might face is you might have two of those very nasty overlaps where add spawn, and, and you have something else to deal with, like add spawning, um, and portal, and ghost. Like, those are really, really bad overlaps. We push so quickly to 50% that we passed and skipped a single ad phase. So that's really important and it shows how the strategy of proccing Prideful on the last boss uh, paid off from that suicide we did earlier at the key. So we only had 3 deaths overall, really pleased with our run. It, we timed it with 4 minutes plus to spare. So I hope the video was helpful and if it was useful, do subscribe to the channel. I publish daily Shadowlands content on this channel. And if you like my user interface, my weak auras, you can find them in the description below. Thank you so much for your support. I'll see you in the next video.